Christopher Pasbrugge from Collective Nord. First of all, thank you, Alice, for the invitation and the opportunity to show some projects of ourselves. So we are a Collective Nord, an office based in Antwerp. And uh, for us, collective refers to the way we work within an open debate about architecture within a group of people. It also refers to the in-between space between public and private uh, that we have an aim for in our projects. First, we're going to do a kind of small introduction about ourselves and then uh, we're going to dive into the projects. Um, this is a satellite picture of Flanders. Uh, Flanders fully built region with a few landscape remaining. Uh, often uh, undesigned parts clashing with some formal gestures. This is the context we operate within. Um, it's specific conditions of, of clashing conditions actually provide the reading of it as a collage city. Um, and our projects often reflect further upon this given collage conditions. Um, a fully built condition also where the pressure is still high because of an expanding population demands some concepts to deal with it. Uh, the first concept that we, we think about is overlap of use. Um, in that way, the overlap in use uh, to use a space in a multi-layered economical and ecological way. And in that way, we also have an emphasis on the borders uh, and how to consciously design them. Second concept deals with these borders between public and private and thickens them up to become an in-between space. This is as well the space where we can restore the confidence to meet each other again. Um, in that way, most of our projects carry all a certain social ambition and we often study on its footprint and relating typologies to enforce and enrich this ambition. Um, we also believe architecture has to be meaningful, starting from what is already there. And from this reading of the context as a character, we can define contextual concepts. And then as uh, we have these own imagined concepts, they become again the new context or backbone for our design decisions. This is the Antwerp context we're uh, working a lot in uh, since we're also there. Um, we will show you seven projects, three of them in the 19th century belt and four within the 20th century belt. So you have each time different context and conditions that we react differently upon. And the projects will be presented by myself as well as the other partners, Peter Wills and Hans van Bavel. So the, the first project we're going to show is actually also our own office, um, situated in the 19th century belt uh, that we call also in that area the 2060 area. It's the most dense part of Antwerp where all the newcomers uh, arrive in a way. Um, so specific condition. Here you can see how, how come this is so dense. It's uh, building blocks where in the middle of the building blocks you have also warehouses and that creates a certain fabric that uh, lacks a bit of air, except the one here in the middle um, where already an old uh, printing firm was demolished. So you had a building block with in the middle an open space. Uh, it was a kind of competition to provide an ID for this uh, site as well as a kind of uh, yeah, bid to, to buy it. Um, from the beginning, there was this clear ID to, to provide that space with an openness to make it kind of a collective garden where four volumes are um, situated towards the, the highest walls of the neighbors. Um, and then you have one volume close to the street as a kind of gatehouse to enter the collective garden. Um, that provides then this uh, condition where you have the decor decorative uh, facades towards the collective garden and then the gatehouse next to the street. Um, since it was this old printing company over there, um, 
that became also an inspiration for the kind of casco structures to with masonry um, to be defined. This casco structure that can provide different functionalities. There can be lift within, can be working also as an office. It can be used for parking um, and turned around towards the street. It became a kind of rhythmic uh, uh, entering of the collective garden where also the, the vertical circulation could be uh, positioned as well as the collective storage. Um, since the volumes were quite thick um, and oriented north, um, we have foreseen in the back the vertical circulation with double height uh, spaces, so the light can enter from the roofs uh, within these volumes. All the serving functions as well are situated there. Um, on the roof, you have a, a roof terrace, which each volume has their own uh, garden pavilion, so we call it, um, and fenced off by a kind of cluster screen. Uh, so you have your own private character on top of the roof. This is then the, this cluster screen from the collective garden scene. Um, then some measurements were taken to make sure uh, this collective garden was not privatized and receives the right status to function. The first uh, measurement was this section that uh, was pushed slightly down towards the uh, level of the collective garden. And then the decision also to uh, position on the ground floor the more private uh, bedrooms and on the first floor and the second floor, the more uh, uh, open living rooms. Uh, so you can never directly enter the collective garden or privatize it. Also, the fact that we choose to make a private terrace um, on the ground floor, on the, on the highest floor, is also a way that people can, can be privatized on top of it, on the volumes, and in that way, um, we believe the collective garden can work since you're not never um, forced to take part of this collectiveness. You can also choose to, to go back to your own privacy. Um, this is then an image of this uh, slightly pushed down ground floor with a bathroom. Uh, the second um, aspect is our office, of course, since it's there in the middle. You have a lot of coming and going of people that are not living there. That already gives a kind of different character of this garden. And then uh, the entrances are situated uh, not frontal, but at the side. Also, again, not to provide that you cannot uh, completely privatize this garden. There's also two streets, so that means there's a coming and going in that direction as well of people. And uh, there's a kind of uh, carport with collective carport uh, with a kind of hardened surface where uh, children can play as well as ourselves. Um, this is then the plan a section and image of the, uh, the house at the street. Um, which has a kind of spatial bayonet floor plan in, together with a section that is slightly high, higher on the ground floor to communicate like, hello, here's something special going on, there's a collective garden going on. Um, it also plays as well in this facade with this uh, bit bizarre conditions of building it yourself uh, that we have in this area. Um, and then on the first floor, you see within this bandit plan system, and because of the height level difference, you have kind of a spatial uh, plan within the bedrooms on the highest floor. This is the uh, situation of the site in when we first met it. So all back, backsness and collages of all uh, things that used to be there, also patterns of, of, of masonry. That became also an inspiration actually for the project. Um, you can see it here on the uh, side uh, facades. And also the idea that a, a back facade in the end becomes a front facade and vice versa. So that play uh, also together with the cluster ID that you can see also a lot in this uh, neighborhood. 
Um, I spoke already about it, so this uh, character of a, of a warehouse with uh, masonry as a structure, as a character, with then the infill. This is the masonry in the building site uh, as a character, and then how it can be infilled in a kind of domestic way, like you see here in this house, with a vision here to the collective garden below, or as an office. So uh, the military hospital um, project in Antwerp is a competition we won in 2005, together with the uh, Bail Achtergaal architect and the uh, 360 architect and um, Michel de Vigne uh, for the landscape. The project is situated in the 19th century city belt of Antwerp. And um, we made a master plan with a total of around 400 homes. Uh, that was less than requested, but in this way we were able to realize the idea of living in a park. Um, of course, the, the developers played a, a huge role in, in this story. Um, we made a variety of uh, housing types, from social housing to spacious lofts, and the construction was phased. And in each phase, uh, we um, we attempted to uh, to put different types of housing on the market. So the site is actually located between two areas, um, the Posthof area in the south and the Zürenborg area in the north. Um, so what is specific uh, to the site is that um, the edges form a specific curve in the urban fabric. And on the other hand, um, that it has is, uh, its own uh, orthogonality which bears no relation with the surrounding street pattern. And those two uh, characteristics turn aside in an enclave. So um, ambition for the master plan was to preserve the individuality of the site uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand, uh, to fulfill a pivotal, uh, pivotal uh, function between the Posthof and the um, Zürenborg districts by means of an open space concept. Within the enclave, two parts emerged. Uh, one part, the hospital area, uh, which uh, is dominated by strongly rhythmed massive brick pavilions, and um, all in the same orthogonal pattern, and also um, the most uh, representative buildings were, were found in this, uh, in this area. Over here you see uh, an old picture um, of the hospital area where in front you see the, the chapel and left and right the pavilions. Um, on the east side you have the arsenal area. This is the, the part where um, you could find the large warehouses and the only representative building here was the, the, the gatehouse in the north. Um, and uh, then there were uh, a couple of other buildings with offices that uh, literally followed the edges. Um, a characteristic feature of this zone was the open space that uh, developed between the periphery and, uh, and the warehouses. So and together they, uh, they formed the enclave with a strong orthogonality and, uh, and, and a rough edge. Uh, dotted lines you see over here uh, indicates the, the demolished buildings. And this is an old picture of the, of the former state of the site, which gives us a, a kind of inspiration and uh, which make us believe that uh, the site had the potential of a walled city garden. If you see, um, see what we made of the, the new buildings, um, and you see in the hospital area that there is a lot more space, a lot more greenery, uh, it's less dense. So we designed um, a small footprint uh, over here, uh, an entity of, uh, of three towers um, were planted. Uh, yeah, like um, kind of re repetitive hole, uh, which refers to the entity of the pavilions. Um, and on the other side, uh, the east zone, which is much uh, denser, there we um, we made a kind of large monolithic blocks 
uh, which were composed out of houses with ground level access uh, or, or flats. And so new buildings in the east and the west um, are also planted according to the orthogonality of the existing pavilions. Uh, and in the, that way, they reinforce the, the enclave character. Then we made a, a kind of a, a plan with the qualities of the of the edges, um, where sometimes uh, a wall is, is like a, a guard wall to build against, uh, and sometimes it, it were really beautiful uh, garden walls, which we uh, of course um, keep. The other buildings uh, that were um, that we made were situated uh, on the edges um, and here the orthogonality is not followed but uh, the character of the of the the forts embankment is sought so the the buildings are articulated and varied so it gives um, this kind of model and um, if you see to the public domain we wanted to to make it as a, a kind of public garden so uh, for this concept of the public garden to succeed it was essential that all uh, cars are kept out of the site so um, residents park underground with entrances uh, on the edge of at the edge and the visitors also has uh, have uh, parking lots um, situated at the edges um, so um, in order to stimulate the use of the garden by local residents, uh, new entrances to the inner area um, were made. Um, we made six accesses um, that uh, connects the area with the surroundings uh, and which are uh, accessible by walking and cycling. And this is then the, uh, the, the final plan, um, how it is built today. Here you see um, the plan with the different uh, phases uh, of construction. And then, um, yeah, well, the historic buildings on the site were, were constructed from solid brick. brick. So this material was uh, uh, prominent from the start. And uh, we opted to use this material in, in all new interventions. And after uh, a thorough selection, um, we, we found the three shades um, from a range of a single brickwork. So um, we decided to use a solid red brick for interventions in the historic uh, buildings, a nuanced red brick for the, the larger new construction uh, volumes like the S-shaped buildings or the, the park towers, uh, and then a yellow green um, for all the buildings that are located at the edges of the site. So here you see the, the solid red uh, bricks that uh, are used uh, for interventions in uh, buildings that were uh, uh, preserved uh, or the historic buildings like the pavilions um, where we use it for the infill in the, in the openings or to make um, terraces, the nuanced red bricks for the new uh, building volumes in the middle, like you see here, and then the, um, the yellow green for all the buildings uh, located uh, at the edges of the site um, with a, a lot of uh, variety uh, uh, in it. So um, when the master plan was uh, was made up, we uh, we split up the projects. Um, so every firm um, had their own projects um, within the master plan, and we uh, built it all almost all the, the the buildings in the in the edge, and also <clears throat> in the middle, we built or renovated the exterior. Uh, of the pavilions and um, and the corridors. Um, so for the pavilions, um, they had to 
to uh, of, we wanted to convert them into uh, into housing units. So um, the basic structure of the building um, of the buildings is taken as a starting point, um, and the buildings are split uh, lengthwise into uh, two dwellings per story, and uh, with the access always on uh, at the end. Um, and we included the basement as a kind of sleeping floor for the ground floor uh, and for the upper floors. We, um, we provided the duplex um, in the length of the room. So um, that's what what you see here in the section is the duplex uh, in the in the floor uh, in the upper floor and uh, the basement um, which um, which we uh, yeah, which we, we made made a kind of uh, English courtyard to um, to bring light uh, in the in the basement. Here you see the division lengthwise. Uh, in that way, um, you have two uh, two houses uh, per level. Here you see. Uh, the new interventions with the uh, terraces in the pavilions. We also um, renovated the the corridor uh, that co that uh, connects all the pavilions with each other, um, and it's now a kind of uh, yeah, it's now a public space where people can meet. And then at the edge, um, yeah, like I told earlier, the the, the buildings were uh, more articulated and varied. Uh, you have different types of buildings, uh, buildings that um, like this one uh, is more is, is more uh, like a freestanding uh, building. Um, and in this um, in this building, we um, yeah, we searched um, to have a kind of experience um, of the of a home instead of a flat. So uh, um, we did that uh, by um, stacking duplex houses, uh, which are accessible from uh, ground floor, uh, but also via um, one external staircase on the second floor uh, with the passage, which you see here on the photo. Um, you see the plan with um, stack duplexes in the middle of the of the plan, and then um, in the design of the facades, the emphasis is uh, is more on the continuity and the massiveness of the wall, um, just like um, the garden walls. So. Um, the more random placement of the openings and the absence of a, a continuous rhythm. Um, also, the absence of housing uh, separating elements uh, support this uh, continuity. Um, an exception um, to this facade um, is made in the existing streets um, where um, where the yeah where the layout of the, of the facade is more is more uh, regular and formal um, yeah more like the urban uh, urban context and um, yeah there are all also buildings that are uh, uh, yeah buildings that that, that fits more uh, in with the existing environment um, so uh, here we made um, private houses. Uh, with a private garden, um, like you see here, the different uh, types of houses. Um, you always have a, a bigger house and a smaller one. Um, that is uh, mixed together. We uh, we search for a kind of uh, spatial uh, concept inside. It's uh, you have a, a kind of middle uh, middle part with a staircase that forms the heart of the of the of the house. Um, those uh, houses were also 
have also uh, a garden, but um, on the east side. So we also gave them um, a terrace uh, on the first floor um, that was uh, orientated on the west. And it's a kind of uh, split level. So you have a, a dining room and a kitchen on the ground floor. Um, yeah, on the garden, in the garden, and the first floor you have a seating area with a, with a, with a private terrace. So uh, so also for um, for these dwellings we um, we uh, we endeavor not to emphasize the boundaries between the individual terraced houses. So uh, staggered cornices and the presence of a, a terrace. Uh, and access for each dwelling uh, certainly uh, betray the individual uh, terraced houses without losing the touch uh, with the other buildings on the edge of the site. Here you see uh, it's uh, actually uh, an old picture <laughs> with uh, the flags of the world, um, world champion football uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, And then the, the rear fa facades, um, where we all only provide a brick on the ground floor. Uh, so the upper floors are clad in a, in light gray slates um, filled in between the, the brick posts. Um, yeah, the, fa the facades um, appear here much less massive. Um, and um, the emphasis is placed on, on the ground floor, more on the scale of the individual gardens at the rear sides. Like you see here. And in the interior, like I, I said before, um, we, we searched for a kind of a spatial concept. So um, every house has, a, has its uh, own staircase uh, in the middle of the, of the house. Um, with a kind of split level, so um, from this, from the seating area, you look uh, into the garden, uh, and you have a connection with uh, the the kitchen and the dining room. Here um, you see it from uh, the ground level floor uh, to the seating area. But also, the smaller types um, have the same uh, same concept. And um, they also have a, have a carport or a spacious, uh, overly spacious entrance uh, hall, um, which serves serves as a kind of transition between the private dwelling and uh, the public street or square. This next project is the result of a design competition organized by AG Vespa in 2008. It is located inside the ring road around Antwerp in a neighborhood called Klein Antwerpen, where actually a big part of the Jewish community is residing. The task was to design a street side building with classrooms and administration for a primary school. Inside the building block, um, there was already, as you can see on this image, a classical building. Um, defining a playground. In this building, some more classrooms will be located and also a nursery school. The facade of this building um, around the courtyard is listed heritage. The building that we had to design should become part of this streetscape. It mostly consists out of well-preserved woods from the beginning of the 20th century, and some of them are in a quite decorative style with accentuated cornices and bay windows. And occasionally some apartment buildings, as you can see on the left. Uh, this is the implantation plan of our proposal. Um, we designed the ground floor program in a linear arrangement against the left party wall. What is notable here is the wide passage that connects the public domain of the street with the playground inside the block. 
it is no, not only a special choice, but it was also required to have a passage wide enough so fire trucks can reach the existing building uh, inside. A bit more zoomed in uh, from front to back um, in this linear arrangement. Uh, we located uh, on the street side a garbage storage, then uh, elevator and stairs. Then we have the administration, the secretary room, and at last, uh, next to the playground, we have the canopy. To the right of this pathway, uh, we have an outdoor stairway that leads to the classrooms on the upper floors. Floor. Uh, on each floor, uh, there is in the middle part circulation with two stairs. That was a requirement uh, for fire regulations. On the front and back, then we have uh, classrooms for different purposes. As you can see, uh, the big classrooms on the front have a parcel wide bay window. And at last, on the fourth floor, there is a meeting room for the staff. And on the back, they also have a roof terrace that then looks back to the playground. In this three dimensional section, you can see how the different parts are articulated. So we have the passageway that connects the sidewall from the street with the playground inside. Along this passageway, there is this linear arrangement of ground floor. On the upper floors, then we have uh, classrooms. You can see the bay windows here also. And on the right, uh, you see the playground with the existing classical building around it. And on the back uh, uh, behind the chestnut tree, the old chestnut tree that we could preserve, there is a canopy. It's on the street side, um, we composed in white brick. You can see on the ground floor, there is this big passageway. Um, and we think um, this in, in the character of the of the street, how we found it. But because of, of the yeah, yeah, parcel wide and a big bay window and a really big opening, it subtly reveals also the more public program. On the front, you see this uh, typical uh, three bay window arrangement. And also the white passageway that gives a view inside the school site uh, to the passersby. Uh, the passageway is wide enough to make a place for a very simple uh, bicycle storage. Uh, further, we pass by the elevator on the left, uh, which can be uh, where which you can reach the upper floors. And then you pass by the outdoor stairway. And the material choices we made are very basic and self-evident, we think. We chose white bricks for facades on the front and red, big, red bricks for bearing walls and recessed facade parts. Um, we chose natural wood or concrete for ceilings and uh, green for inner and for certain accents. For instance, this uh, chalkboard-like uh, wall that there is in the passageway with the name of the school. Then on the ground floor, uh, on the back, uh, next to the playground, we have the canopy. We designed this as a continuation of the facade. Um, it has a wooden roof in a kind of leaf-like structure. And on the left, you can see that the window opening is apparently giving enough imagination to the children for their playing activities. Under the canopy, there is also stairs. Rooms 
um, which are located under the secretary room. And then we have an overview of the playground where we can see the coming together of the new building and the existing classical building uh, inside the box. Here we see the, these administration rooms in the linear arrangement. Uh, when they are seated, the staff, they can look back to the passageway and see who enters the school or even who is taking the stairs to the upper floors. Uh, further down, we have this um, secretary room, which is raised about one meter above the, the other administration rooms. So the principal can have a good overview of the administration and the passageway. And on the other side, uh, the principal can also have an overview of the playground. If we then take the stairway uh, to the upper floors of the street side building, um, we reach the middle part um, of each floor where there is a hall with coat hangers. Here we see the, the green floors. This is a view to the big classrooms on the street side uh, with a parcel white bay window. And on the back side we find smaller classrooms. And the closets in each classroom we designed as infills uh, in the brickwork of the bearing walls. And on the fourth floor uh, we find the meeting room. Always these same material choices that we that we use uh, throughout the whole building. This last image is a concept sketch that we made that more or less summarizes the project. Because of many special restrictions that we had to this task, our design strategy was to compose this building as a juxtaposition of separate, separately articulated building parts that were brought together in a seemingly unhinged way. But actually it took us quite an effort to achieve this. So the next project is a competition we won in 2013. It's a social housing project in the district Pugtbal with uh, 73 housing units. The competition was organized by Wohnhaven, which is one of the, the larger social housing companies um, in Antwerp. Lutbal uh, is located in the north of Antwerp, along uh, the busy uh, Northern Laan, but uh, the district is also surrounded uh, by the harbour in the west, the motorway in the east, and the Albert Canal in the south. Before we started the competition, there was already a master plan drawn up for the entire area in which a number of uh, densification locations were indicated. The project area um, where the project was realized uh, was part of one of the densification sites that defined the edge of uh, the district along the Northern Laan. On the other side of the project, uh, which you see here, there was a renovated uh, play park that forms one of the green hearts in the district. So um, Rigbal is actually um, a specific entity in the Antwerp urban landscape. Uh, the northern part of it um, is, is, uh, is inspired by the garden suburb ambitions uh, of the beginning of the, of the last century. And then the southern part uh, is inspired by the, the, the CM ID. So the, the idea of the functional city, and there you have uh, large scale housing ensembles. In the edge where our uh, project site is, is, uh, is in, um, the edge has a, has a different grain. There are a series of individual volumes uh, that forms a string. Uh, 
and these volumes are in a slightly staggered arrangement. Uh, mostly uh, they are um, solitary box shaped volumes uh, and sometimes they form a kind of ensemble such as uh, the housing block on the corner uh, but also our neighbor in the south of the project area uh, which contain a, a church and office building and a, and a cafe um, that forms together an ensemble and for us this uh, had an uh, inspiring idea for the for the further development of the project so here you see the northern lawn with the large scale buildings uh, with a kind of industrial uh, character. This is the, an old photograph um, where you see the large scale housing ensembles um, in the CMID. Uh, I think they are um, developed between 1940 and 1960 by um, Van Gogh. And then the, the northern part of Lugbal, where you uh, see the, the garden city like uh, houses with a, with a different uh, character. Here you see our uh, competition proposal, uh, which contains three buildings that forms an ensemble in, in the string I mentioned earlier. And for us, one, one of the challenges of this project was on the one hand to cope with the extreme noise levels um, that were uh, at site, but also uh, the required density. Uh, we were asked to make uh, a density of 140 dwellings per hectare, which is, uh, is quite high. Here you see uh, a photo of the American photographer uh, Gary Winograd, which uh, was a kind of inspiration for us and which expresses for us the idea that a strong collective exists by the virtue of strong individuals. Uh, and it was an idea we wanted to take with us in the project. Uh, we wanted to opt for an appropriate balance between togetherness and segregation, because we, uh, we believe that the collective can work better if everyone feels comfortable within a, a group of peers. So with this in mind, we create an ensemble that consists of three buildings with as many identical housing types as possible in each building. By composing uh, the building stamp from, a sm from smaller volumes on the scale of an apartment building, they connect on the one hand with the grain of the edge, but by presenting themselves as an ensemble, they also refer to the larger scale of the existing ensembles at uh, Lutal Z. So this ensemble is formed by three buildings uh, at a low pedestal. Uh, so you have a long slab on the northern lawn, uh, which also um, yeah, uh, exists uh, out of uh, three opposite buildings. Um, you have a, a high rise building or a, a higher building on the second plan and a, a, a lower building in the north. And the space on the low pedestal between the three buildings of the ensemble works like a kind of belvedere with a view over the park. And our intention was not to bet on destinations, but to um, yeah, um, to direct all the movement from uh, forwarding and leaving. So in this way, the space gets uh, the right tone as a semi public space because it's always accessible for everyone, but also neutral enough not to be fully appropriated by the residents. What you see here is a plinth over two floors um, and the trees of the semi-public semi space that introduce a different uh, scale. Also, the, 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 the opposite buildings of the slab um, becomes more on the scale of the user. And above the plinth, we uh, we wanted to make the buildings more abstract uh, with a stronger focus on, on repetition uh, in accordance with uh, with the modernist appearance of the larger uh, existing uh, existing buildings here you have the the overall plan where you see at the south uh, the ensemble with the office building in the cafe and then um, 
our project. So the public square uh, in between the buildings is about 70 centimeters higher. Um, and also the houses on the ground floor are a few steps higher. Uh, and in this way, we give the ground floor homes sufficient privacy towards the, the public street. Further, we wanted to, to make all the addresses uh, on this public square. And we also made two passages from the Northern Line uh, through the building to the public square. Uh, the ground uh, level plan contains uh, almost only uh, duplex houses. So um, you also have a kind of um, a vital and uh, yeah, vital um, uh, ID to the towards the street. Then the, the upper level plans where you see in the slab that they there are um, almost only uh, bigger apartments, so three and, and four bedroom apartments, always with a double orientation. The lower building that has on top of the duplex houses one bedroom apartment and they are accessible uh, with two external stairs and a passage. And then the, the, the higher volume, which, uh, which contains uh, adaptable flats for seniors. Um, and um, the plants are, or the living spaces are always folded or almost always folded around the loggias and uh, have in that way also a double orientation. Here you see uh, the section of the of the lower building and the higher building. Where in the lower building you see the the underground car park and duplex houses with on top the one bedroom apartment and the passage, and then the higher building that uh, has a setback on the second floor, which also expresses the the the, the plinth and the and the human scale. For the plinth and the facade on the slab of the Northern Lawn, we opted for a brick in a large format. On the one hand, the stone has a kind of artisanal expression, which is in relation with the Garden City ID and, and, and which expresses um, the plinth in a more human scale. But on the other hand, the stone is also um, an expression of a, of a kind of industrial character which fits in fits in with the larger scale of the old industrial buildings along the northern line. In the facade uh, above the plinth, um, they, they were made out of a white brick with a module format with files joined. And this emphasizes the abstract ID and the repetition. The light color of the stone ensures that the facade parts are less present and that the emphasis is more on the plinth. So here you see our building on the Northern Lawn where you have a more uh, or a larger scale with uh, large lintels, large windows and um, yeah, a more industrial character. The detail of that facade where you also see the passage uh, through to the public square behind the building and the other uh, side of the building where um, existing and old buildings become family with uh, the new ones. A crossing to the northern lawn where you uh, have a glimpse of the public square and where you see that the duplex houses on the ground floor level have a few steps uh, up. There is, you see the staggered windows in the plinth and um, also the, the, the pergola, uh, which emphasizing the, the human scale and the, the homeliness. A view from the playground to our project. And here the pedestal um, with uh, behind the wall, the slope 
and uh, a few stairs up. The other side where you see the wall um, follows the external stairs and the entrance door to the underground car park. The higher volume with the adaptable flats and where you see um, the entrance with uh, green glazed bricks that gives uh, every building a kind of uh, identity. Um, and here also the trees that uh, in this photo just had been planted and uh, yeah, still needs to grow, of course. The private terraces of the duplex flats that are somewhat higher than the, the public uh, area. And then a view out of the, the, the terraces of the flats of, um, in the slab with uh, a view uh, of the playground, of over the playground. And then the communal um, hall. Um, here we designed um, a kind of surface mounted system for the lightning. Um, it's, it was something we we, uh, we came up with uh, in the construction period because um, the contractor decided to make sub substantial parts of the building in precast uh, concrete, and there was no time to 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 plan the position of the lightning in advance. So so uh, we came up with that idea, and then uh, the interiors of uh, of the the houses where we uh, tried to search for a kind of uh, spaciousness uh, looking throughs uh, from uh, kitchen and, and dining room to the sitting area but also a kind of a diagonal view uh, to the public space so the next project is a reallocation and the restoration of the historical site Ringford Hof into a diversified housing project it's a competition we won in 2015 in collaboration with uh, Studio Roma, which is an office that specializes in uh, restoration. The project is, uh, is located or situated in uh, Mirksen, which is uh, located also in the north of Antwerp, actually not far from the Rigval project. And originally uh, Mirksen was a rural municipality but this uh, rural character disappeared uh, in the mid of the 19th century uh, with the industrialization and uh, the location of Medixum um, yeah, uh, on the Albert Canal attracted many companies and also encouraged population growth, which also um, means a lot of building. And uh, in the, the photo over here, we see a, a an overview of the park and the castle, uh, which is enclosed by houses and high rise flats. And uh, the park uh, forms green lung in the center of Mirksen. Um, in this photo, you see the former state of the buildings where the castle, uh, which is going back to the middle of the 16th century, um, where in the 19th century it was further expanded in a, in a kind of L-shaped building with a service wing. The service wing, um, which is on this photo, not clearly um, to see. It's a little bit uh, hide it uh, behind the trees. Um, and then um, in the in the north of the castle, you have the coach house. And those three wings uh, were protected as a monument. Um, on the right side of the castle, you have the monastery wing. Uh, which is uh, added in the 20th century. Uh, it is not protected as a monument, but along with the park, uh, it is protected as a town and, uh, and village scape. On this plan, you you, uh, you see an overview of red, which is uh, protected as a monument, and green and blue as a, a town and, uh, and village scape. Here you see the former state of the of the buildings, of the interior of the buildings, where in uh, 2004 asbestos was discovered. Um, the 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 buildings remained uh, empty for uh, for uh, a long time. Uh, only the monastery wing and um, and uh, the castle wing in the cellar uh, was. Uh, 
was used by a local theater group and youth movement. Um, over the years, however, the physical condition of the castle and the service wing deteriorated. Here you see the former state uh, of the heights outside of the building, buildings with the um, with the monastery and the chapel uh, on the right top, and uh, the castle um, beneath it. Um, so Agia Vispa purchased the buildings in 2014, and uh, they issued an architectural brief for a reuse study. Uh, their aim was to re redevelop the site into a residential project, but they also uh, wanted to refresh uh, the park and give it back to the community. Um, here you see uh, other photos of the, the castle seen from the park and uh, on the right top, uh, the monastery wing. So um, our project area was part of the master plan Groen Hart Merksen, which was uh, drawn up in 2011. And in this plan, plan um, the area serves as a kind of hinge for creating a link between Rinkford Hofpark, uh, Hof van Rosendaal or uh, Rosendaal Park, and um, at Gemeentepark or um, Merksen Park. So um, the aim uh, of the master plan was to uh, maximize the park by breaking down the barriers to the other nearby park. So um, in this way, um, the green environment uh, could be reinforced and um, become uh, a really attractive location uh, as a place to live. Um, here you see the idea of the master plan. So you see they wanted or they want to uh, make two connections to the park, to Rungford Hof Park. Um, the connection in the north, however, um, meant that the, the school plot um, yeah, was to uh, cut in two. So this uh, connection was not, um, not made. But uh, this makes the connection side of the castle all the more important. So uh, we try to uh, take full advantage of this in, 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 our, uh, in our project. Um, and in order to merge the, these parks into one large park, um, we, uh, we had to cut some less valuable parts of the building complex. Um, and we had the idea to place uh, the castle back in the park uh, by having the park start as early as possible. So at the height of the existing street, we created a lane um, that, that uh, was a kind of a new entrance to the park. The park area behind the monastery wing will be reopened to the public and to make this possible, the chapel uh, was demolished and a second entrance to the park um, was made. Here you see the former state of the street where it will be will be turned into um, a lane to the park. And this is the new overall plan where we uh, carefully demarcate the private collective and public parts and uh, so by intervening with uh, the non-valuable parts of the later build on monastery wing we, we on the one hand can make new entrance but on the other hand we, we could restore the, the valuable castle wing um, and um, we also feel, we also um, reopened the historical uh, access bridge um, and uh, reopened the, the, the field in moat, um, which gave us a, a public access to the inner court where uh, the coach house can provide uh, a public program. And then uh, a landscape buffer uh, was provided um, as a boundary between, between private and the public parts of the building and the park. Here you see an impression of the monastery wing where you see um, that new contemporary facades 
are built um, to provide to provide outdoor spaces and to um, to restore the, the the scars of the demolished parts and also the thoughtful uh, cutting away of a part of the monastery wing which, uh, which restores the freestanding castle and gives the tower uh, back its stateliness. Here you see the, the ground floor uh, level plan. So um, the starting point for, uh, for the re reallocation uh, was um, the, the, the strength and the character of the different wings, um, where we, we use that as a, as a kind of layout. Um, and the, the basic layout of the buildings uh, has been preserved as much as possible. And where possible, we restored it. Um, so in the castle, for example, the rooms uh, in Infelade, in the location of the corridor near the inner courtyard, have been restored in the service wing. The division into base was preserved and used as the base for the division into ground level residences. You see an uh, impression of the, the inner courtyard with uh, the public passage um, and the coach house uh, in, in front at the left. And uh, this, the, the first floor. Um, plan. Um, so the project includes a mix of residential projects uh, types, um, each responding to the spatial qualities of the location and existing character. And the entrances to the residential units uh, are spread across the site. So there is a kind of a high level of social uh, control. And um, yeah, the, the, the castle wing and the service wing uh, retain their residential function and we create seven uh, housing units in in these wings uh, where the coach house will be uh, provided as a commercial space. Uh, the monastery wing uh, will be taken on uh, a long leash by uh, Villa Vip who will transform the interior into a, a care home for people with, with uh, disabilities. Uh, the top elevation gives the, the former state with uh, the chapel uh, where the, the, the elevation um, um, under it gives the new, uh, the new state um, where you see uh, the cutting away of the uh, monastery wing to free up the castle. And the south elevation where we um, respect or try to respect the the three-part structure of the monastery and uh, we raise the middle bay which allows us to um, to provide quality outdoor spaces in the service wing um, there was historically an imbalance between uh, the facade and the section uh, since only the facades are protected uh, we have tailored the new sections to the facades so uh, this results in, a, in an interesting spatiality. And what you see here is, a, is a different sections of the, of the different houses where you see um, yeah, a different uh, tailored uh, floors to the, to the facades and the windows. On the long section where you also see the, the different height of, heights of the floors a more detailed section where you also can see the expression of the, the existing walls as textures, but also uh, a new texture for the, the inner light walls. And an impression of the, um, um, of the service wing, of one of the houses where we, um, we uh, made uh, dark grain stained uh, beams with uh, red brick floors and different textures of, uh, of walls and light walls. But also the furniture um, that has its own character, where um, in the castle we, we make a, a kitchen that is like a, like a furniture. Um, in the service wing, 
um, the kitchens are more, more straightforward. And here you have a, a picture of um, the construction site where you can see the, the intervention in the monastery wing that frees up the, the castle. It's now uh, seen from the other side, from the park side, um, with the entrance um, from the park to the castle. And here you see um, the interior of the service wing, um, where we wanted to play a kind of game uh, between the textures of uh, existing and new walls and, and uh, light interior walls. So uh, the, the existing walls were uh, provided with a kind of lime wash. Uh, new parts are uh, plastered and um, the light walls um, have given a kind of uh, curtain wall, uh, timber wall uh, character. Here you see um, the red bricks, the different rooms, or where um, certain niches give rise to a certain function. The sleeping uh, levels where you have a uh, looking through to the living area. The, the textures of the, the light walls with their own unique character. Or where doors um, merge into the wall. And um, the tower that becomes once again the circulation with a, a beautiful uh, spiral staircase. The enfilade and the corridors in the in the castle wing. Uh, with on the right side, the bedrooms. Aside from the bedroom to the bay window through the inner courtyard. Also, of course, the restoration of the, the beautiful 19th century parquetry. And the restoration of the ceilings and where the kitchen is uh, like a piece of furniture in the room. The restoration of the scars where once was the chapel, we uh, make new contemporary facades um, with new outdoor spaces and uh, communal entrances from the park for uh, the monastery wing. Um, this project is situated in the 20th century belts, uh, specifically in Deurne, uh, where this area is uh, called Conforta neighborhood. This was a neighborhood built during the interbellum for the expansion of the city, uh, mainly for people working in the harbor, diamond and uh, factories. Um, you can see here the site in the red rectangle. And yeah, specifically is also that it's really on the edge of the city. The city clashes here with the harbor. And you also notice it in this Conforta area over there, where you can still see uh, some warehouses uh, clashing with this uh, Conforta housing. Um, it was a competition organized by AG Vispa and AGSO, which is Stedelijk Onderwijs in Flemish. Um, the program was a local school kindergarten combined with Adult Evening School Art Academy. So that's quite interesting. It was uh, two actors combined together on that side. So thinking or reflecting further on overlap of views. Um, you can see already on this picture the Conforta area. So very repetitive housing where you have a kind of uh, formal gestures combined with informal motives. For example, you have this higher volumes defining the square. Uh, but as an informal gesture, the uh, front gardens uh, that you find also in the 20th century belt. But as well, uh, this repetitive housing by years is adapted, appropriated by the people living there that you can notice in the front facades. Um, the site itself was a, a charming pavilion structure that today is uh, already demolished. 
um, that was already decided because uh, yeah, it didn't fit any more the standards of today. Um, and of course, the, the beautiful big trees were kept um, to uh, in being incorporated in within the project. And then on the left, you have the an existing elderly housing that had to be uh, built next towards. Um, in between the existing school and this elderly housing, there was already a kind of small urban farming project going on, uh, being shared with school and elderly housing. And that had to be uh, taken with us uh, to be given a place again in a new project. Um, so these are pictures of the Conforta housing, the big picture. You can see the big volume, but as well the repetitive housing appropriated during time by people uh, painting it in beautiful colors uh, to express their individuality. And then on the right, the uh, kind of informal front gardens. Um, around this picture, you can see uh, this uh, old warehouse structures that clash a bit with this uh, housing. Uh, the city already provided a volumetry that was a volumetry in three, partition in three, so a, a volume to uh, make the street continuous next to the elderly housing, then a lower volume, uh, and then a higher volume uh, to define the public square. Uh, this partition in three became a kind of given, but we also thought maybe we can make it a bit more specific, uh, contextual by pushing the middle volume a bit back so that we can create their, uh, a front garden like we see in the neighborhood that can also provide a certain privacy. Um, and then at the same time, we thought, yeah, how can we make these three volumes meaningful? Maybe it can be then a direct one-to-one -one relationship with its programmatic logic. So you have uh, in blue on the heads of the square, um, the administrative functions on the ground floor and on top this art academy um, as a more public uh, gesture. In between, there's in orange this uh, classrooms um, and then next to the elderly housing, you have a more like a service uh, uh, serving uh, volume that is translated within this plan. So you enter in this uh, yellow circulation space where you have a double height view towards already the academy. You can go then up when you pass then this administrative functions and uh, people saying, hello, who are you? So you go up to, to the first floor um, and there you have the uh, auditorium that is in use also with the kindergarten. Um, and then you can go uh, one floor more up and there you have three uh, classrooms of the art academy. Uh, the orange uh, uh, rooms are the classrooms. So on the ground floor, there's a bigger uh, corridor direct relationship with the uh, play field. So it can also be used as a kind of covered play field, but also in direct relationship with the classrooms can be used as an exhibition space. And then on the First floor, we turn it around, we make the, the corridor in direct relationship with the street and the classrooms more direct in relationship with the uh, playground. <clears throat> uh, the classrooms can also be uh, connected uh, two by two. And then on the left, you have there more the, the service uh, where the staff can find their place. And on the ground floor, there's more the, the moving space and the sleeping space of the kids. Um, plan made by uh, our partner Cluster. Uh, graphically, not the most beautiful plan, but it, uh, it's an execution plan, so uh, it tells what it has to say. Uh, so it has a kind of uh, green playground with the big trees with playful elements, a very enclosed uh, space with this uh, covered uh, roof. And then on the right, there's a bit of an overlap in use uh, in the public domain, or it's not public, it's private domain with a public use. So you have a, a room that can be used together with the playground during school hours and after school hours. Uh, it will, can be used by the neighborhood as a kind of uh, intimate uh, square. On the corner, we have positioned the, the urban farming. Uh, 
so it really becomes the on a more yeah very uh, formal position it becomes a the um, the identity of the school and as well is on a position that can make it makes it more easy to be used by these different actors. So this you have these three volumes um, that we thought okay we have a programmatic logic with it but maybe it's also interesting that we can define them really as three different characters when you have on the left the open a bit formal warehouse that we refer to, of course, to the warehouses in the neighborhood uh, in relation with the square that communicates publicness with on the ground floor, more like this uh, massive plinth uh, with administrative functions. And on the first and second floor, more the expression of this art academy with more open uh, windows. In between, there's this uh, classroom uh, volume that refers to the pavilion structure that used to be there, but as well maybe this industrial um, warehouses of the neighborhood. And then on the right, uh, there's more this service uh, uh, volume uh, with a kind of infill in uh, wooden fencing that you can also find in this area. Together it gives uh, this image where the color and materialization binds the whole and that in front you uh, see this urban farming project as identity of the school project. The back is quite similarly treated, but there you have a, a generous canopy that embraces the existing trees and provides covered play field. Um, so yeah, the concept becomes also the context. So we have already three volumes that become three programs that becomes three characters. Uh, thought maybe it's then also interesting that uh, they are also translate within the interior. So speaking about this referring to industrial logic, we thought maybe it's interesting to, to play, for example, in the middle with this more skeleton structure in steel and uh, concrete to refer to this more pavilionary uh, structure, while on the on the left and right, you have more the, the, the rooms that are made in uh, visible masonry uh, as a kind of gesture and character already of the space. Then you have the, the necessary info elements, and then we uh, use the, the fixed furniture as a kind of uh, new layer to provide domesticness. Uh, all together binded by a kind of a red ceramic tile that you can also find in uh, warehouses. We also uh, provided double height spaces uh, to see kind of openness and readability and as well of course a spatial quality but as well uh, to, to make it possible to have a, a layered uh, program where you have on top this uh, public academy and on the ground floor and the first floor uh, a school. So how they can be combined together, you need a bit this uh, open feeling uh, to make it uh, work as a whole. And together it gives this uh, result in renders. Uh, so in top, on the top you see the, the, the big uh, play corridor in relation to the open classrooms. Uh, that can be used in way from the classroom or in the way from the playground uh, with a steel skeleton structure. In the middle you see the foyer with the visible masonry um, as a bit of generous uh, size as well where people can meet each other. And then you have the auditorium on the below that is used by the uh, academy as well as the kindergarten. Um, and then the, the red carpet going on. This next project is again the result of a design competition organized by the Vlaams Bouwmeester, which we won in 2010. The task was to design a master plan to combine different types of care for elderly and some services on the site of an existing retirement home. And afterwards, uh, we had to design and execute different parts of that master plan. 
the project is situated in Borgeroud. It's a neighborhood uh, outside of the ring road around Antwerp. In red, you see the contour of the existing retirement home. If we zoom in, um, in this bird's eye view, you can see that this existing retirement home is a centrally placed, quite institutional building uh, on, a, on a really green site with, a lot, with lots of nice trees. Um, around the site, we find a lot of uh, larger apartment buildings, um, which are recessed or almost detached um, from the streets. And on some sites, we also find some row houses, which are actually a lot more common in the larger neighborhood. These are some pictures um, of the streets uh, adjoining the site, where you can see the apartment slabs and some uh, row houses as well. This is an impression of the larger neighborhood where you can see that actually the road houses are a lot more common. Um, the streets in this neighborhood are a bit larger. Um, they have front gardens, but still it, it doesn't have uh, lots of uh, residential qualities, let's say. It, it's, it stays in a way quite a functional street design. This is the building itself we found on the, on the green side. We thought that it was really an expression of a centralized model of care, with this one central entrance from which all the building parts can be reached. It, it, it really has the character of an institute, institute almost similar to a hospital. Um, we didn't really want it for the new uh, project. We really wanted to make a place to live. This is the implantation uh, plan of the site with, with this uh, centrally placed retirement home that we found there. What we proposed um, for the master plan is quite literally an inverted arrangement instead of a central building. Um, we placed a large public garden um, where all the building parts are arranged around. And we thought that um, this public garden, uh, which is centrally placed, could be charged and activated with the most public parts of the different buildings, but also with, uh, with lots of entrances and, and private addresses as well. So we thought it, it should be a public space where all the inhabitants and the caretakers of the site can meet each other, but also the residents of the surrounding neighborhoods um, are invited in this way to, to participate. On the outside, on the street side um, of the site, we chose to distribute as much as uh, living spaces as possible so that um, the building ensemble shows itself to the neighborhood more in a domestic way, not, it, not as a big institutional building. Uh, the serrated contour we designed of those buildings around, uh, they define semi-private courtyards. This is an early three-dimensional collage we made where we can see the building scheme from above. As you can see, the most buildings are low rise. Uh, they, are, they have three stories and there is one higher volume on the left, which has six stories as an exception. But because there are these um, big apartment slabs around, it still fits ne neatly, we think. You can also see on the outside the serrated contour. In this way, we avoid um, long pieces of facade on the street side. 
we we then create a succession of uh, smaller facade parts and, and greenery in the, on the street side. We also ordered a study uh, before we made this design to study the quality and the value of the trees to make sure we could save the most of the good ones and even adjust our volumetry in order to do so. Here you can see two reference images. The left one is the reference for for intimate courtyards, um, which acted as a reference for the courtyards in the serrated contour on the outside of the site. The image on the top right position is a reference for a more formal public garden, which acted for us as a reference for the public garden centrally located in the master plan. The first building we needed to design uh, was the residential care center on the left of the two entrances to the uh, public garden, let's say. Uh, for this big building, we needed to mediate between the large scale and um, efficient organization of care and the desired small scale of life and the domesticity we wanted to achieve. In the next few slides, I will show how the program of this residential care center was distribute, distributed in, in this serrated uh, contour. So this is uh, the basic cell. It's a typical residence room of which we needed 180 in, the, in this building. As you can see, there is an old bathroom. There is quite a, a, a wide living space uh, with a large window, uh, which makes for abundant natural light in this room and the uh, and the good view uh, to to the outside world. If we combine seven or eight rooms. Um, we defined uh, a living group. So these seven or eight inhabitants, they share uh, living space and the kitchen for dividing the meals. They also have an outdoor space in the form of a terrace or um, they can go directly to the courtyard if they live on the ground floor. If we combine then two living groups, um, they can have their own entrance on the ground floor with, with, with their own elevator. So in this way, there is not for the whole building, uh, not one central um, entrance, but there, are, there will be four entrances shared um, by two living groups each. The next level is when we combine four living groups. They share a bathroom with an adapted bathtub and a nursing station. And then if we combine eight living groups for uh, 60 inhabitants, um, these eight living groups, they constitute a typical story. Um, we were not allowed to make um, separated building parts because at night there are only two, three caretakers present of which there is only one doctor actually. The last part of the building is um, the pavilion we uh, located in the formal garden. Um, it is constituted by the public parts of the residential care center so we have a kind of uh, dining room, which has a cafe-like ambience, which is quite a cosy place. There is also a hairdresser, a physiotherapist, and there is also the uh, central administration for the whole center. Here you can see uh, the, the whole building or the ground floor of the building. Uh, put into the garden design. It's a design by Cluster Landscape. There is also on the upper right 
part of the building. Um, we also connected the tower with with the service apartments. Uh, the right part of the plan will will have 70 more uh, service apartments and the daytime care center, and it is now in execution. It will soon be delivered. The next step was to translate the central idea of the of this inverted urban block, where the most public parts are in the center and the more private parts are on the street sides, to translate the central idea to, to architecture. Therefore, we developed two distinctive uh, articulations that you can see here on the section below. So the, the, the most left part uh, is a part which is uh, on the street side, and the rest is actually the articulation uh, facing the public garden. For the residential uh, care center, it was it was quite a specific task because we had 180 identical rooms, so we had in a way to conceal this sameness uh, behind a new facade design, which we should design on top of this. Here you can see what it became. So on the left, you can see the facade articulation of the parts facing the environment. They have a dark red background color and an accentuation of the third floor to connect to the typical domestic scale of the environment. On the right, you see the articulation of the parts facing the public garden, where um, yeah, bright colors are used to, to really lighten up this space of this uh, public garden, also with a more horizontal lining to bind bigger parts, uh, big and bigger parts together and, and really line this uh, public garden. This is an impression we made of these facade parts. We actually made a third articulation for this pavilion, which is uh, in a very dark color and has a more organic segmented um, roof. And we thought it, it, it should more belong to the garden than, than really be part of, of the building. This is a picture of the actual state. Uh, where we can see this, this, um, these bright facades of the uh, residential care center and the pavilion, which is more part of the garden. We today we miss some trees, of course, some full grown trees to really make the atmosphere of the garden complete. This is an impression we made of the courtyards in the serrated contour on the outside of the site. And the picture of uh, the executed uh, situation. In this case, where we made, we really um, shaped the volumetry so the, that we could save up this, uh, this beautiful tree. Also an impression of an individual room. Also the executed situation. This was um, a collage that we made for the, the shared living rooms where we proposed to move apart the precast concrete slabs to make place for a wooden lining and to yeah, where also the lighting fixtures could be um, located. And this is the executed situation where we think that with this quite simple 
means of, of moving apart these concrete slabs we we created with, with quite economical means a very specific uh, atmosphere. This is a view um, of a courtyard where we can see on the right uh, a terrace of one living group which is articulated as a kind of hollowed out green tiled part of the volume. Here we have a facade part on the southern entrance of the public garden where these two distinctive articulations come together in one facade and are connected by this green tiled terrace. This is a view of a decentralized entrance to two living groups, each floor. Um, here you can see our preference for everyday low brow materials. For instance, these perforated concrete blocks, which are mostly known from self-made garden walls in our region. And we also use some cement fiber corrugated plates to mimic curtains um, on the sides, on the on both sides of the window. You see this specific detail. And this is how the building shows itself uh, to the environment. So it's uh, mostly a low rise building. Um, with this serrated contour, making place for this uh, succession of uh, smaller facade parts with, with green courtyards. And where we also saved uh, some very, a lot of very valuable trees. Here we can also see how the chosen materials really connect to the surroundings because this picture was taken in the front garden on the other side of the street. Here we see this, this higher volume, this um, tower-like structure with this um, surfaced apartments. Also in this building, these two articulations come together and they are connected here with an outdoor stairway. If we then walk inside, we can see the pavilion. This is a view of the other side, uh, looking at the tower and the pavilion in between. This is inside the pavilion, pavilion with this uh, kind of cozy cafe-like ambience inside with a wooden ceiling and, and bold wooden trusses. This uh, segmented organically shaped roof um, is present as a space defining element also in the hairdresser room here. and also in the physiotherapist room. And even in the administration rooms, uh, you can really feel this, this kind of overall cover of this pavilion. This is the last picture where we can see the actual situation, a glimpse of the what the public garden will be in the future. But of course, we, we miss a lot of uh, plants and trees. Uh, so this part will be delivered at the end of this year. At Brickworks van der Mortel, we make high quality bricks, slips and clay pavers in unique colors and sizes. 
To support architects around Europe and the UK, we created a brand new high-end brick lab, housing the latest in ceramic innovations. Built on more than 150 years of experience, we bring together tradition with the architecture of tomorrow. Every brick, slip and clay paver in our brick lab is part of a research and development program creating new knowledge and insights. Working together with architects, we can thus reach higher levels of sustainability, quality and circular solutions, combining them with the highest design standards of today. All this without losing our passion that we would love to share with you.